Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Steelers show. I'm Chris. Got Joe with me. Uh, Paul is uh, Paul always talks about his love of Groundhog Day. And apparently Paul's in bed early tonight because he's going to see the Groundhog tomorrow. Uh, and okay. he has to leave at 1 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Uh, like, definitely what? a segment for, for next week. I mean, we do like Sarah's show where we come up with two or three segments. We got a segment already, uh, Joe. Forget yeah. Sure. Like, what the heck is going on with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah it, it should be quite interesting. So, but hey, we're not here to talk uh, the dumb groundhog. We're here to talk the Steelers. And yeah, NFL's a 24 7, 365 day a year league anymore. So, lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, first of all, the Eagles and the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. Uh, San Francisco lost all their quarterbacks. Eagles, man, looked impressive. I, I, I wasn't on board with the Eagles at the beginning of the year, but, man, they, they're dominant. And then the Chiefs, um, you know, they made plays at the end. The Bengals didn't, and the Chiefs won. They're going to the Super Bowl. Uh, let's start with this, uh, Joe. I almost called you Phil for a second for some reason. Um, because yeah, of Puxatani. Yeah, I'm thinking you're a groundhog now. This is how Well, I'm maybe. Um, yeah, the Eagles, it's interesting. Uh, Paul always talks about beefing up, getting a better line. I'll tell you, the Eagles' offensive defense line was so dominant. And, you know, the Eagles beat up on the Steelers when they played head-to-head. Um, you know, I think for the Steelers to get to the Eagles' point, they got to just do better on the offensive and defensive lines, I would say, right? Well, they're not going anywhere until they do. Yeah. I mean, there's there's not much other comparison to do unless there's something better happening on the offensive and defensive line. But I would say that from the time that they played the Eagles earlier in the season, they actually were, by the end of the season, better on the offensive and defensive line. So, uh, you know, I think it might be – a different story. It may have the same ending, but it, it may be a different story were they to play, you know, more towards the end of the season than the way they played them at the beginning. Here's my hope, and maybe we'll talk about this next week. Uh, we can start to look at the series don't have a ton of extra money to play around with on free agency, but if they can get a good offense alignment in the draft, like first or second round, and maybe I don't think they have the money. Well, we're going to talk in a second about this Taylor Rewan. If they could get maybe a guy like that who is not top of the line with his injury history, but if you can get like a decent offensive lineman in free agency and a decent offensive lineman in the draft, you know, their line got better as the year went on. Maybe if you can, you know, ploy up a little bit. I'm not saying the Steelers are going to be the Eagles next year line, but, you know, they're on the way up, I'd say, right? Oh, I think so. Uh, they're they're already better than they were earlier in the season, so that's already a step in the right direction. Uh, and I know that several of the there's at least one uh, offensive lineman that you know people aren't aren't very happy with. So you know it's it's easy to identify where the replacements you need. Uh, I know that you know Tomlin is already scouting uh, offensive linemen at the Senior Bowl. Uh, so they're already taking that very seriously. They know what they want to replace, what they want to fix. And so that process has started. Yeah, let's talk about that now. I don't know if you got to see the links I sent you on that. Yeah, um, just quickly, but yeah. It, it was funny. Um, the senior boy, you never know. Sometimes teams do stuff to trick other teams and to make a trade or something. But it seemed like the Steelers were all in last year on the quarterbacks. Um, I read some stuff this year saying, look, Tom's got his eyes focused on the offensive line. Um, it was funny. Dewan uh, Jones, I believe, real big kid from Ohio State. He's really climbing up on the draft boards. Um, I was hearing maybe third, fourth round earlier in the year. But there are some people now thinking late first, early second, which mm-hmm. – could be a match for the Steelers. I mean, they got the 32nd pick, and they got the 49th pick. Um, it, it was funny. Um, I tweeted about, find a girl that looks at you like Mike Tomlin looked at Dewan Jones. And uh, there's a lot of pictures. Uh, Tomlin was impressed. Dewan Jones, 350-pound offensive tackle. 
Um, looks impressive, but I, I think it's saying a lot that Tom was really looking at um, Lyman in the Cedar Bowl. That doesn't mean they have to pick somebody at 17, but wouldn't surprise me if they picked that Lyman at 17. At 17? You think? Possibly as early as 17. I mean, I really think that you got to look at offensive line. I really think tackle makes the most sense. I, I listened to a podcast today that was making the argument for a guard. Saying you know maybe you know you replace like a Kevin Dotson. Yeah, I think Dan Moore. If you can only have one lineman come, is the guy you need to replace. I think Dan Moore could be a effective backup lineman, but I think right. you need better left tackle. Um, but I think really you're looking at offensive line. I'd say offensive tackle. Some people think offensive guard. I think inside linebacker. I was talking to Paul about this last week. You know, Miles Jack could be a cap casualty. Uh, Devin Bush, we're not happy with Devin Bush. Devin Bush is starting to talk like he wants out of Pittsburgh. So you might need off. I think Devin uh, Bush thinks he's going to get more money somewhere else, and I don't think he's right. right. Yeah, I'm not excited about Devin Bush either. But, man, if, and, and this is what makes me think they're going to end up keeping Jack, even though it might make sense to cut him with the cap marks. Who else do you have the line, inside linebacker? So not very be, many. So that's going to yeah. be something that's necessary. And, that, and I'm not sure it's 17, but I'm thinking between 17, 32, and 49, I think one of those picks could be inside linebacker. Uh, I also th- yeah, I also think cornerback. Um, everybody seems to like Joey Porter Jr. I'm not sure if that's your guy, but I think a cornerback should be somewhere in this for three picks too. I think that's true. I think those choices, one uh, with that, those two first rounders and that sec that that second rounder, really seems like. Those are important things for the Steelers to shore up for next year, especially knowing that there's a lot of potential salary cap casualties on the board or people who are going to get more money or or offers other places. And and as soon as I'm hearing maybe one bigger name free agent, maybe. I mean, they don't have a ton of money to share. They're not cash strapped, but they don't have the money they had last year and free agency. So you never know. Maybe, um, you know, let's talk about Taylor Wan. Um, <laughs> what a wild story. But say they try to get a really good guy a little bit cheaper um, because the Lu- Wan's had some injury history. Maybe if you do that, you could say, okay, we have our tackle. Maybe we look at another potential issue on the team. Uh, I still think they could need a receiver. I don't know if they need to pick a receiver really early in the draft. But if you get a free agent, maybe you say, hey, maybe we can look at a receiver in the late second round or something like that. That could be. All right, uh, Taylor Wan. This is interesting. Uh, Wan, yeah. about two years ago, was a really, really good uh, tackle for the Titans. Uh, you know, he's had some injury history. He's got a huge contract. You know, he, the Titans, it seems expected that the Titans could drop him from a salary cap perspective. And it's, but it's funny. I mean, as of tonight, Lawan's still a member of the Tennessee Titans. So he goes on a podcast. Well, it starts out with somebody posts a picture of him in a Steelers uniform. And he responds. He likes it. Um, and, and right then you're like thinking, hmm, what's going on here? So Lawan goes on one of these Steelers podcasts, not ours, but another podcast, and it gets to the point where they ask him about it. And he's like, oh, I love Mike Tomlin. He's great. And they're like, all right, well, if they offered you one year at $10 million, what would you say? He thinks about it. Sure, I think so. And then he said, like, one year at $12 million. He's like, oh, sure, I think so. And then today, I don't know if it was even today or yesterday, he's on Twitter and he's talking about his own podcast because everyone has a podcast right now. Everyone has a podcast. Us. So he wants TJ Watt in this podcast. Well, apparently, uh, during a game in the past couple of years, he spit at TJ Watt. You know, there's some back and forth, and everything. And he was griping on Twitter about why TJ Watt's not coming on his podcast. He's like, come on, TJ Watt. I might be a member of your team next year. What is going on, John? I mean, still a member of the Titans. Yes, the Steelers need bare offensive linemen, 
I'm not even sure if they have money to pay him one year, ten million with their salary cap indication. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I don't know if that's a number that actually works. I mean, he can say he can say that on his end, but I, don't, I don't know if the Steelers have that kind of money to spend on somebody who doesn't, who hasn't played a full season in three seasons. I've been job negotiating lately, and yeah, you know, someday I'll say on the podcast. It's not that important. You don't appear too needy. <laughs> I mean, you gotta be careful. You gotta play a little hard to get here. Uh, and, and I'm a dopey journalist, Joe. Taylor Lewan is an offensive tackle for the NFL. Going on podcasts, talking about what figure you take and everything, is Taylor Lewan too needy? I mean, it sounds like he's a little getting a little desperate here. I don't know about just being needy because on a certain level, you got to put out there that you'd, you'd be interested. You know, it, it seems strange that he's – so clearly identified the Steelers as a player. I, I know that he made us some comments about playing under Tomlin in, I don't, know, I don't know, was it the Pro Bowl or something like that? There was some sort of special event and he played under Tomlin and really enjoyed that environment and the way that the, all the other players talk about working in uh, a Tomlin locker room. He, it sounds like a place that he feel comfortable uh, operating, so I know that that's a major plus for somebody like him. But uh, yeah, it's just strange that you would identify a specific team. <coughs> Someone talk about money with that team too, and I'm thinking too. Yeah, I mean Taylor Lewan or Dan Moore. I'd rather have Taylor Lewan. I mean, yeah, sure. that's weird. But I mean, if I'm Taylor Lewan, I'd talk up every team. You know. Man, the Browns, they're up. I, I would not. The Bengals need some help. You know, I mean, I, I, I yeah, I, I think, but I think for him, he's got to look around the league and look at the places where he he's still going to be the be- their best option at his position. And the yeah. Steelers are one where if he were able to go get on the team, he's going to be the best option at that position uh, over Dan Moore. So, um, you have to look at that. You have to look at the the direction in which the teams are going, whether they're going up quickly or not, or they're on the decline, whatever it might be. But, uh, you know, there are still places that are more attractive than others. And I would have to say at this point, given the way the landscape works, the Steelers are a few uh, a few puzzle pieces away from really having something put together. They really, they missed the playoffs by a, a fluke. Uh, they would have been in the, in the mix. They were very close to being there. There are other teams that are much further away than that. Um, yeah. I kind of wonder, again, I, I don't mean to put too much sock in the tail of one, but you know, it, it sounds nice. I mean, you know, between him and Dan Moore, I'm kind of wondering though, is Taylor Lewan this year's honey badger? You know, we're, we're like, <laughs> oh, you know, we all get excited. We, I think we spent hours and hours on the podcast last year saying, what if the honey badger goes to Pittsburgh? And sure, you know, I, he actually considered it. I don't think it was a total waste of time, but right, you know, he actually came for a visit, he considered it and decided that he wanted to be right. closer to where he went to college, where he grew up. So yeah, so I'm kind of wondering Taylor Lewan's going to end up somewhere else. So he'll be like the honey badger of the show. Uh, yeah, maybe. Good, maybe. Good and I think I think it's not like I still don't think it's likely for him to come with the numbers that he was talking about. I think he was saying that those were numbers he'd take, but I don't think that's a number that the Steelers are going to be able to play with. Yeah, I heard a podcast today, and I got to tell you, the um, network we used to be on, there was a, a sorry cap guy and uh, I, I listed another salary cap guy. I'm not sure if anybody truly understands the salary cap. It's very confusing. Uh, but the way that this guy explained it today, he said, like, right now the Steelers are 500000 bucks over. But there are cuts they can make, uh, like William Jackson the third, They owe him $12 million if he's still for the Steelers next year. And he was hurt last year after they traded for him. Yeah. So unless he's willing to come at minimum sorry, why do you keep him? So you can save twelve million that way, um, you know. Mitch Trubisky, I mean, you know, he could help give you ten million if you cut him. Um, there are guys that you can a lot of money there to get back. But again, 
part of the reason why it's need to do that, they need 10 to 12 million to sign their draft picks. So, yeah, there, there are monies that the Steelers can get back. They need some monies to have a draft. And everything. So, it'll be I do, a- I do yeah. think I saw an article today, and I'm wondering if it's the same one that you saw, uh, the that was talking about that. You know that the Steelers were already close to that cap, that salary cap. I think that included money that was set aside that they were going to have to pay for draft picks. Okay, okay, but but, but, but like they're already in danger because right. they have to put money aside for the draft picks, blah blah blah, and whatever. And you're right, right, there's going to be cuts and they're going to make adjustments, but um, yeah. Well, and you're kicking money down the road. It's not going to help you later. But the Steelers have Because we're it. still paying Roethlisberger, right? Right. And, and they're going to do that. I mean, that's all the Steelers do business. I love every team that's done business, too. You know, you, you, you kick money down that road. They're not going to have – they had like 60 or $70 million last year, which for the Steelers was, was crazy. You know, how much money they had to pay. They're not nowhere near that. Now, I think they'll have money to keep guys and all the money maybe to get a guy. But they're not going to have tons of extra money by any means. You're, you're not going to see them sign six or seven guys off the street for decent contracts like they did last year. There's no way. They're probably not also going to draft offensive linemen and pick up a guy like the Juan. Yeah. That's, that's probably not likely to happen. Well, hmm. I could see. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I could see them maybe – like in the first three picks, get alignment, and if they make the money and place the emphasis there, maybe getting Luan if they give him for ten million. I mean, I think that's out there. It's a potential. I wouldn't put I a lot of money behind it. I just don't see it happening. If you've got a guy, right. if you got, a, if you end up with a guy like that Ohio State kid, uh, and and you you know full well that guy's probably if it's not day one starter, it's going to be within the first couple weeks. As he gets up to speed, then you leave Dan Moore hanging around, and well, then he's easy to replace, as well, opposed to paying some guy millions and millions, and then you're like, "Well, I got to get my money's worth out of this guy." Well, well, think about this: if there's one guy, if we said, "Which one guy are you replacing on the line?" I, I think a lot of us would say Dan Moore, but again, you know, some people are targeting dots and saying, "Hey, maybe he's not your starting lineman." Uh, Chooks, they, they paid him enough money where well, I don't see him being dropped this year, but I'm not sure if, if Chooks is their best right tackle either. So, I mean, they potentially could do more than one, but if you do more than one lineman, like in the draft and free agency, now you can't use that to help your inside linebacker, or you can't right, maybe get right, a right. number receiver to be a number three guy or something, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, they're not going to draft a whole new line. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I think two is possible. It wouldn't stun me, but it's what happened by me, so. I think you're more likely to see an earlier pick, one of those top three, ending up as a as a offensive lineman, and then something much later. Well, I, I think Mike Tom is showing his cards in the senior bowl. <laughs> We just, the, says, the Pittsburgh Steelers just don't play that. We aren't, we're not playing silly games. We go out there, we look at what we're looking at, and that's what we right. get. Like, yeah, yeah. Mike Tomlin would not be making um, thirsty eyes at Dewan Jones. And yeah, he's not. He's, he's not out here playing three D chess. Yeah. He's just like we're playing football. We're not playing three D chess. You keep your games. We don't need it. I'm sure Dewan Jones' girlfriend's like, man, why is that serious? Good Gosh, man. Like a man like that. Heck yeah, but that's. that's... Oh yeah. why? Well, if we can get a better offensive line, if Mike Tom wants to be thirsty, go for it, Mike. Uh, I can't fault that. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm not into that. I don't. <laughs> I don't think that's. A I'm good sure idea. Mike Tom is into it. It's just something I don't think so. Either. Joke around about. So, yeah. all right. Any other Steelers news or Steelers stuff we should talk about this week? I don't think so. We're just starting. We're just at the beginning of that. This dead time where we. Oh. <laughs> what do we even talk about for the next six months? Well, it'll know, go faster than we think that it will, and then it will feel like it's going. But but that's the nice thing about being independent like we are now. We don't have to do – and we can make it shorter if there's not as much time to talk about. So, that's right. Uh, yeah, so, hey, let's end the silly show for now. So for Paul as he's chasing Pucks of Tony Phil, mm-hmm. Joe and me, have a great night, everybody. 
Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high-impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.